hello you are welcome again to online healing crusade we are so glad to have you uh we believe that the lord has been blessing you and if you are joining us for the first time this is online healing crusade and um, it takes place every day 6 p.m gmt plus one the servant of the lord is given the assignment by god to preach the word of life the word of healing the word of god and wherever the word of god is there is power because it's the word of the king you know in uh, psalm 107 verse 20 he said he sent his word and heal them and deliver them from their destruction. You know, you might feel that maybe somebody should come here, you should, you know. Uh, just believe in the word, the word of faith, the word of healing, the word of salvation. When you receive it, God always sends his word. You may be far away in another nation, another country, you know, another a continent. But when the word of the Lord is sent, the word of the Lord will reach you right where you are and where you will believe. If you will believe that word, Thy sin and say, Lord, I believe, be it unto me according to the word. That word is going to be effectual in your life. Hallelujah. Because the word of the Lord is always effectual wherever He sends it. So the way of the Lord is sending His word. And He's sending His word. He can send His word through His men. He can send His word. If you're a child of God reading the scriptures, you know, the Holy Spirit inspiration. And um, probably if you just feel that, is there God? Where is God? Where? All these things happening, you know. God is sending His word to you tonight through His servant, and hear the word of the Lord, and there's something great will happen in your life. Questions will be answered, issues will be dissolved in the name of Jesus. Join me tonight to welcome the servant of the Lord, Evangelist Mi Ulufeli Ogundare, as he comes with the word of the Lord sent from God unto us in the name of Jesus. Stay tuned and God bless. Praise the Lord. Thank God for another opportunity to bring you the word of life. Every time we come on here, it's another time to, you know, minister the word of life unto people. Um, I, I want to read to you from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4. <clears throat> Start from verse 1. And as they spake unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they lay hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now even time. Howbeit many of them which had the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Ananias, their high priest and Cephas, and John and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst of them, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, You rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you and unto all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. This is a stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the canal. Neither is there salvation in any other, but there is no other name, other heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Well, now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned people and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to this man? For that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them, is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that is spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. 
And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above 40 years old, on whom this miracle of healing was shown. Praise God. <coughs> so the miracle of healing that happened here started from chapter 3. The, the man at the beautiful gate that... Um, was asking for arms and the apostles came there that's apostle peter and john and they said silver and gold we have none but that which we have we give unto you in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk and he took the man by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and his ankle bone received strength and he leaping up stood and walked and entered uh, and entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising god and other people saw him walking and praising god and they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together into them in the porch that is called Solomon's porch, greatly wondering. And that's how Peter took the opportunity to now preach the gospel to the people. And the Bible said about 3,000, about 5,000 were born again that day as a result of the message. But one miracle that happened that cannot be denied, one undeniable miracle, one notable miracle was what led to the salvation of 5,000 people that saw it life. You see the power of the miraculous when it comes to the gospel. You see the power of a healing when it comes to expanding and spreading the gospel. You see the power of miracles, signs and wonder, wherever it happens and people can see God at work today, real for everybody to see, not just um, story that they have read in the Bible, stories they have read about what God has done in the life of some, some people in, in some years past, but the one that they can see now, whenever you see an authentic miracle, is tears of the heart of men for a supernatural belief in the God that is able to do this and also in the word of God that they have been hearing. That, that means these words can be trusted. This word can be believed. It means God is still alive. If God is doing this thing in the midst of men, this is beyond human reasoning. <coughs> this, <coughs> this is beyond human brain. So people begin to see God at work in their own days. It will, one miracle can preach more than a thousand sermon. <clears throat> Are you getting what I'm saying? So I believe that um, this period, the world needs the supernatural power of God more than ever before. Whenever and wherever that power of God is available, things happen that make people to change whatever they have believed before. Are you getting what I'm saying? <clears throat> I went to India to preach some years back, maybe 2013, 20, 2013, 2012, 2014, around that time. <clears throat> I went to India to preach. And um, God did some wonderful things. The first time I went there, uh, I didn't do open air crusade, as in having a big crusade, no. But I was having small, small crusades in small, small villages. And the evangelist who happened to be an Indian himself, uh, who was taking me from one village to the other, he was noting all the miracles that happened in everywhere we went to. Some were raw healing, some were immediate miracles, some were deliverance, demon leaving people crying out and all that. There was a particular case that was so serious that a young man was just after laying hand on him for healing, demons started manifesting. And before you knew it, the whole place was captured. But I ensured that we finished the administration for him before I moved to other people. And he became so free, so different from the kind of wild person he was when he was under the administration. 
in fact, they needed to do some cooking for us. It was part of people that were involved in the cooking. After we finished the crusade, people were surprised. Wow, it's seriously a change. In fact, in that place, <laughs> one of the things that happened was that um, the villagers came and they, they have their own local turban. I don't know what it means. But they say, say we are welcoming somebody that our, our village has accepted you as one of our whatever. So they went and looked for their turban and they turban me, put it on my head, my head. So if you see the picture, you think I have become a, <laughs> you understand? But they say it is honor. We just want to honor you that God has used you so well in our village today. No problem. But what do I want to bring up? People started trooping out to come and hear that gospel because of those things that they saw that happened. You understand what I'm saying? One miracle can preach more than a thousand sermons. People have been in a particular environment before they've been seeing, they've been hearing doctrines, they've been hearing don't do this, don't do that, so you can go to heaven and all this and all that. But when they see a blind man see, they see that a lame man walk. They see a demon possessed person become free from the demon as if nothing happened to him before. When people see those things, it, it writes an indelible mark of God is alive, Jesus is alive, into their heart and really cause a lot of changes in people's heart. And that is why the miraculous cannot be uh, put aside when it comes to the gospel. You can't put the miraculous aside. It's one of the major things that get the gospel of God to spread among the nations of the world. If you see after Jesus Christ died, uh, that uh, the first meeting they had, and a miracle happened, the one of Acts chapter 3. <coughs> the Bible said 5,000 souls were saved as a result. The very next time they're going to minister again, uh, the time that Holy Ghost baptism came, about 3,000 people were saved as a result. Are you get what I'm saying? So when you see 3,000 at a time, 5,000 at a time, that's 8,000. And the more you, the thing keep increasing like that, more of thousands of people keep joining them. And those are the things that make the number of the churches in the days of the apostles to just escalate and just become something out of the ordinary. No, none of the synagogues that they've been attending before have those kind of numbers. Are you getting what I'm saying? So things, the supernatural power of God does a great work to the kingdom of God and a great havoc to the kingdom of the devil wherever miracle power is in operation. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, uh, so also anytime we go around doing programs that involve healing, Miracle signs and wonder. You see, when you start crusade, <clears throat> the first two, three days, and God has started doing so much in the midst of the people, they can see themselves. They are the ones that will go and announce to others that, oh boy, God is here. These people are not playing games. So this is who that has come to our town. I think there's something working there. And others will come and see. And then when people that have the very the particular persons that God has done miracle in their life, and they go back into the midst of the same society where everybody have known them with those sicknesses and disease. People are ready to follow you to the place. You are sure? Mr. John, you that you cannot walk. What about the stick you used to use to carry yourself around? I thrown it away. Hey, what about that your uh, wheelchair that they used to push you around this place? Ah, don't use it again. I'm free now. Ah, what happened? Ah, there's a program going on there. I was there three days ago. Eh? People just start coming because they have seen that the hand of God is at work in that place. And the same thing, I believe that um, we need that in this end time more than anything else. The devil is assaulting the world with a great number of sicknesses and disease. COVID, COVID is just one out of many that the devil is using to assault people and get people to be destroyed en masse mass death, you know, there are accidents killing people, there are what you can call uh, <coughs> unexpected occurrences of things like uh, flood, things like, um, you know, uh, 
train getting out of uh, the rail and then causing a lot of damage or trailer that just lose control then we need to kill people different sort of things are happening these days and um, one plague will just happen before you know it a great number of people both adults and children have just died you know and if people die without christ they are going to a christless eternity but who is the one that has come to kill them before their time? The Bible says that in John chapter 10, verse 10, it says the thief is the one that cometh to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus is the one that has come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And you find out that in all these places where miracles are happening, it's always happening in the name of Jesus. That was why when the apostles, I mean, when the Sahedrins and the Pharisees and Sadducees, the leaders, the religious leaders of those, of those days, when they wanted to stop Peter and John and all these other people from preaching the gospel, they said, don't preach again in that name. Why? What about the name? Because it is in the name of Jesus that things happen. It is when you keep mentioning that name that we see something begin to happen. <coughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? Israel have known the miracle working power of God to the extent that when they call Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in the time of their war, he comes around and delivers them from war and they win their battle. They are okay with that. But to now say that you call the name of Jesus, and calling the name of Jesus make a lame man to walk, make a blind man to see, ah. This guy, I'm not saying, which name is this one that you have just newly brought now? But we said that that man was not uh, somebody that we should reckon with. He doesn't believe in our religion, you know. He breaks a lot of our Sabbath day rules and all that. Are you using his name now? You are not getting things done. Ah, if we don't stop this thing, that name will spread over. And people will believe that name even more than they believe Moses. Ah, this is serious. Though. We have to look for something to do about this. Though. But... The apostle said, we can't stop preaching in that name. It is in that name that miracles happen. It is in that name that healing happens. Ah, you get what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> I want to read a particular place now before I stop. Acts chapter 4 from verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was taken, where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they speak the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believe were of one heart and of one soul, neither any one of them said the things that he possessed was their own, but they had all things in common. And with great power gave the apostles witnesses on the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked for as many as were possessors of land or houses sold them, and brought the prices of these things that were sold. And they laid them at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had made. And Joseph, who by the apostles was so named Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the company of the Cyrus, from the country of Cyprus, having land, he sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Yeah, but where I need is verse 20. When they came together to pray, Verse 27, they say, For a truth, the, your holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were gathered together, for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel uh, are determined before to be done. Now, Lord, behold their threatening, and grant unto your servant that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Verse 30, very important. By stretching forth thine hand to heal. So it means when we stretch out our hand for healing, it's really not our hand. It's the hand, it's an extension of the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a cable network, extension cable. The same cable that brings power to the Lord Jesus Christ has extended the cable. Uh, the cable has extended, the extension cable has extended the power from Jesus to us and through us now to the people. Look at, he said, by, verse 30, by stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. So miracles do happen in the name of Jesus. When hands are stretched out, it is still the hand of Jesus. So whatever Jesus could do when he was here physically, as we stretch out our hand in his name, things get done in that name.
and miracles do happen. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I want to pray with you today, and I'll stretch forth my hand to represent the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ, because he's not there with us physically. He's here with us spiritually. But he needs somebody to represent him. That's why he has called us. He has called fivefold ministers, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastor, teacher, that we should represent him. And whatever he has been known to do in those days, those things can continue even after he's dead because he's alive. He resurrected. He didn't get back into the grave after that. And he has said, when we need him, all we need to do is just call my name. So when we call the name of Jesus, he appears on the scene and what he used to do, he will do it again. You know, if you have a mechanic and your vehicle is having issue, you just get to the front of his house, you call his name, he comes out, handles your vehicle. You have a tailor, you want to do uh, whatever, you get there with your clothes. Hey, Mr. So, so I brought clothes for you. He will come out and he will do it. But if any of these people that are, 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 are workers, skillful workers, when, they, when you get there and they say the person has died last month, ah, then a dead person cannot repair your car. A dead person cannot do your clothes anymore. A dead person cannot be a doctor to come and nurse you. The doctor himself is dead. But when you get in there and you mention the name of the person and the person shows up, yes, here am I, any problem, I brought this thing for you. It shows that the person doing it is still alive. But if the person dies, what he's doing will stop. Jesus Christ used to be the healer that we know, that whatever sickness is brought to him, he healed them all. Now, he's still alive. If he were dead, if we call his name, nothing is going to happen, sir. A dead, dead person cannot be raised because the person that used to raise them is no more alive. A sick person cannot be healed because the person that used to heal them is no more alive. But if the person is alive, all we need is mention his name. And you see him come on the scene to come and do what he used to do before. That's what I want you to experience today. I want to pray with you now. Now, I'd like you to just lay hand wherever the sickness or disease or infirmity is, whether on you or on your loved one around you, your mother, your father, your children, your son, your daughter, or whosoever, and you are in a position right there, you know what that person is going through and suffering, and you wish that, I oh, wish that Jesus Christ can be here to just touch this person. You just lay your hand. It will be an extension of the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ. Me, I'm going to stretch forth my hand here to pray in the name of Jesus, and you see miracles happen. Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone and anyone that is in need of healing right now, and they are laying their hand where the sickness is, or in the sick person that is beside them, I ask first the demon that is causing the sickness, disease, and infirmity. The Bible says, you will hear my voice, you will fade away from your hiding places. I rebuke you, devil, and I command you to take off your hand from them in the name of Jesus. Spirit of sickness, spirit of blindness, spirit of disease, spirit of infirmity, I command you, loose your hold upon the life of these ones in the name of Jesus. And I also ask for the healing power that is available in the mighty name of Jesus to rest upon you now from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Whether it's eye problem, whether it is ear problem, whether it is nose problem, whether it is uh, heart problem, whether it is liver problem, whether it is a kidney problem or lungs problem, whatever it is, or wound problem. Whatever it is, from the top of your head to the sole of your feet, I ask for the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ to flow to you now. The hand stretch of the Lord Jesus Christ is being stretched towards you. And healing is coming to you, whooshing out onto you, onto your spirit, onto your soul, and onto your body. You feel that presence of God right there now in the name of Jesus. And be healed from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ said, you are made whole. Your faith has made you whole because you believe that the same Jesus Christ that used to do that is still alive. Now receive Jesus' healing upon your body in the name of Jesus. Then walk out on the devil, whatever you couldn't do before. Stand up and begin to do them now. You couldn't eat some particular food before you are free to eat them. You can't walk. To lift your leg. It will lift now. Lift your hand. It's going to lift now. Raise every part of your body will respond to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we will pray. Well, until tomorrow, be healthy, wealthy, and strong. God bless you.